I'm sorry, but the part where Tenebris say your father and I are in the middle of something, it makes me think that they're going out together or something. <laughs> I gotta admit, this transformation scene is actually pretty epic. Also, yay, a new song to cover. Now I'm just gonna need to find a partner for a duet. Not gonna lie, when when Sophira's mentioned about this ultimate secret weapon that even Tenebri doesn't know about, I was expecting some epic, powerful, magical stuff, but then I see him pull out a sword and I was like, oh, okay, I guess that works too. <laughs> this scene makes me feel like Sophidos is actually saying, I could dispose of you now, but I can't because you're the main character and you have plot armor. <laughs> nah, I, I don't blame you for it though. You kinda need Rainbow Alive for the plot to keep going on, otherwise TCG would have ended right here and there, so... And I find it funny how even after Sofido stabbed Nisty, uh, he didn't actually kill Rainbow Dash right away, instead he let Rainbow Dash cry for Nisty for whatever reason. And yeah, I get it. Once again, plot armor. Okay, I'm sorry if I keep unintentionally judging your writing muse. Your writing is actually 10 times better than mine since I, I'm actually really bad at writing an audio drama, I'm not gonna lie. Anyways. Fun fact, I was actually eating a banana while watching the scene and when Nisty just sacrificed herself to save Rainbow Dash from the sword, my banana instantly fell into my bed and I was like, you're buying me a new banana muse. Although I gotta give you full points for the emotional roller coaster. I was literally freaking out. Uh, I was watching this at like 12 a.m. in the middle of the night and <laughs> wow, this gave me so many chills at the same time. And I didn't know if Nisty was actually gonna die or not. So yeah, overall, you're, you're actually really good at making emotional scenes. You never fail to break my heart apart and... <laughs> I was actually screaming, no, Nisty, when I first watched this and I was just hoping that my parents didn't wake up because of me crazy screaming in the middle of the night. Also, the fact that you put the instrumental of the Is This What You Wanted reprise as a background music did not help at all. That was pure evil news. That was pure evil. Celestia, Luna, as the rulers of Equestria, you guys are useless. Move your lazy ass and do something, will ya? Okay, look, I'm all about blue streak humor. They're always fun to watch, but this one is actually pretty upsetting for me. The fact that everyone is still grieving over Nisty's death and blue streak is like, where am I supposed to live? It, it kind of make me want to slap the hell out of her. No offense, blue streak. This scene actually made me dislike Fluttershy a little because the words that Fluttershy used to encourage Rainbow Dash actually sounds like, Rainbow Dash, get a hold of yourself. Your life is way more important than Nisty. I, I know, I know, look, I know that's not the moral. I, I know that's not what Fluttershy is trying to say, but I'm sorry, the fact that Fluttershy talked about Rainbow Dash's dream of becoming a Wonderbolt and such just makes me feel like... Fluttershy is saying that Rainbow Dash's life is more important than Nisty, which isn't true because every pony should be equal. Okay, I sound like Starlight right now. <laughs> but other than that, I absolutely love the emotional roller coaster in this scene, so I'm not gonna complain. Rainbow, please don't beat yourself up about crying because it just proves that you're not heartless. To be fair, if my best friend died, I would have cried too, so. Yeah, I'm actually glad that you cried. <laughs> Muse, do you have to use the little dashy instrumental slowdown? I I'm not crying, my eyes are just cosplaying as a waterfall. I'm sorry, but the fact that Hirika said that Blue Streak is the most important pony in Rainbow Dash's life, I, I just feel really bad for Rainbow Dash's parents. Okay, so the fact that Blue Streak is actually tanked the whole time, I honestly don't know whether I should feel happy or disturbed about it. Like, imagine having a pet turtle knowing that it's your dead grandmother all along. Like, how would you feel? Honestly, Discord could just Thanos snap the whole battle and everything ends right here and now. But hey, then again, plot convenience. It wouldn't be fun that way. 
<sighs> I'm sorry, Celeste and Luna. I didn't mean to insult you this much at first, but not only that you're a terrible sister, a useless, lazy-ass ruler, but you're also a coward? At this point, I don't even know how you became the rulers of Equestria in the first place. Okay, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But, as you can tell, I am a bit peeved at this too. Celestia, you have the power to raise the sun every morning, so could you maybe, oh, I don't know, lift up King Sofidos and throw him to the sun or something? <laughs> Celestia, can you please stop crying and use your brain, you damn crybaby? How old are you? Oh, I hate to break it to you, princess, but this whole situation is actually 99% your fault. So stop crying and whining like a baby horse and use your brain. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I I'm usually never this upset before at Princess Celestia. But the fact that she's not acting like a grown pony right now just pisses me off. Oh, I'm sorry, I can't think of any other way to beat him. So you wanna hear my suggestion? Let's all just go die. That's basically what you're saying, huh, Celestia? <sighs> I, I fought Derpy as the new ruler of Equestria. Seriously, <laughs> even my six-year-old sister is more mature than you. You know, Sofidos could have actually won this battle in the first place if he just killed off Rainbow Dash right there and then, but hey, plot convenience. How do you have this much power? I thought you were just an ordinary Pegasus. You see, King Sofidos, that's where you're wrong. You're in Musecrypt's channel, and Musecrypt's favorite character is actually Rainbow Dash. So yeah, you're screwed. I gotta admit though, this scene is pretty epic. The sound effects and everything are just perfect. It gave me chills, so 10 out of 10 for this scene, Muse. And the fact that Rainbow Dash said this is what I wanted in the end, it just gave me even more chills, so yeah, I never doubted your editing skills, Muse. Even though the redemption arc seems a bit rushed, this scene is pretty sweet and all. Except for a teensy tiny fact that you all might forget. King Sopidos murdered hundreds of ponies, and yet again, just because he's sorry, he receives no consequences and no punishment whatsoever. How wonderful! I don't give a damn if he was corrupted or whatever. It does not justify murder. He still needs to be punished for it. But hey, I'll give you the benefit of a doubt and let's just ignore it, shall we? Because, yeah, I'm not gonna ruin the moment here. Carry on. You know, I can go along with Nisty given a second chance in life, but I'm sorry if this offended you. If I'm being completely honest, I kind of like the earth pony Nisty design more than this fancy colored alicorn Nisty. I'm sorry, it's just my opinion. But yeah, I'm not gonna complain. This is your audio drama. Also... Does Celestia have some sort of hobby to, oh, I don't know, banish her sisters? I feel like in almost every single audio drama, all Celestia do is either banish her sisters or be useless. Just like in Princess Trixie Sparkle, like how she banished Estelle and Luna. I mean, Luna's banishment was canon, but she banished Estelle as well. And in this audio drama, she banished Nisty, so like... Celestia, do you have any other talent other than, no, oh, I don't know, completely banishing your sisters and being useless? Like, literally, that's all you do. I'm sorry, I really want to like Celestia as a character. I really do, but I just can't. But other than that, this scene is really heartwarming. The art is also gorgeous, and I really can't complain about anything. I just love the heartwarming scenes too much. 
Okay, before I continue watching the video any further, I want to take this moment to apologize to MuseScript. I am so sorry because I kept on criticizing your writing. I swear, I swear, I do not meant to do that. It just came into my mind. I hope you're not too offended by it. Once again, I'm sorry, Muse. I know I'm not a better writer than you, so I'm sorry. It just popped in my mind here and there. I truly meant no hard feelings for you. Okay, everything aside, the ending song was absolutely perfect. I literally teared up. Like, this is gonna, this ending song literally made up for all the complaints I had throughout this episode. And honestly, I don't even have any right to complain. I'm actually already feeling guilty for dropping off my parts for this series. I mean, I, I kinda, I kinda regret dropping out for the finale but to be honest back then i really had no choice i was really busy so yeah overall i'm still glad this series had turned out the way it did and i'm gonna be honest though i still prefer the heart shell over the color goddess but that doesn't necessarily mean the color goddess is bad and <laughs> woo Look at the time, I didn't even realize it's 2am in my country already and I need to go to a friend's house tomorrow morning so I probably should go to sleep now but yeah I guess that's it for my review video, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.